Michael. Welcome to Boston. Safe to say you're uh, kind of invested in a couple of fights on this card. How are the nerves ahead of those fights? Oh, man, it's uh, it's definitely interesting because I, I ob obviously I feel like one fight is there's the nerves associated with my guy fighting another guy from another team, even though, you know, Brad Katona and I, obviously he switched teams. Um, but, you know, obviously I'm rooting for Cody. Cody is team Chandler through and through. And then obviously the other one is – it's almost numbness, honestly, you know, because I, I, I want to see Kurt win. I want to see Austin win. I don't want to see either of them lose. So it's tough to watch two dudes that you – you just hope that they go out there, they put on a great performance. One of them becomes the ultimate fighter, winner, and then the other guy gets a contract because they put on such a great show. And the weeks we spent with each other in, in Vegas will never be forgotten for me. They're my brothers for life. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's crazy that this thing is finally uh, ending tonight. So – well, let's talk about the show. You mentioned those weeks you spent in Vegas. Uh, listen, we sat there and we watched the show, but you lived it. What was the, when you watched the show and you watched each episode, did you sort of think, oh, there was a bit that happened in real life that wasn't on this TV show. And when you look at how the fighters were portrayed, how you and Connor were portrayed, what was your takeaway from the show as a whole? You know, I think honestly, nobody will ever know, unless you lived it, nobody will ever know how much time we spent with the guys, the time we spent at the fighter house, the time we spent talking and in the training sessions and that kind of stuff and you only have 12 hours over a 12 week period split between two different teams so you really only got a net 30 a net amount of 30 minutes per team if you will if it was split up perfect perfectly in the middle so there was a lot of moments that you know going back and watch because i was doing my own tough 31 reaction show every week with a bunch of different guests and we would watch the episode together and then kind of break it down and there were so many times where I thought, man, there, there were some really cool moments that I think happened around this time that I wish would have made TV, but oh, maybe I'll maybe show it later. So, and it's, that's not a knock on the production company, ESPN. It's just, there's no way to fit it all. I mean, it just seemed like the weight of the world was on me and my team for almost five weeks straight. And it, you know, it almost feels like we barely scratched the surface of the journey that was the ultimate fighter 31 and i think the fighters were did a great job of portraying themselves my team and connor's team um and i think they did a pretty good job of portraying myself and and connor as well so it was it was good man it was uh it, it exceeded my expectations i guess the breakout moment was probably the moment where he shoved you in the face and you laughed oh the face mush yeah yes the i face think mush, yeah. i think you actually you spoke to us in vegas at right a, after yeah and you're attitude towards Connor was a little different that night and I think now we know why um, yeah when you watch it back do you sit there and you get oh yeah that really actually did piss me off or has enough time now that's where you're like ah heat of the moment we're all good yeah no I think it was heat of the moment we're all good I mean I think no, no matter what I'm just that's not in my nature it, I'm somewhat in, in it I'm somewhat of an oxymoron in the sense that I'm not here ready to fight right now if something pops off unless I have to protect my family or someone I love um ultimately you know whatever he touched me he pushed me he you know got in my face whatever you want to call it um and ultimately i know the score will be settled when we step inside the octagon and the cage door closes and then it's like okay we get to do it um but you know that was you i remember specifically where we were standing where we were at when we did that interview and, and the, my interview was much different than a lot of people would have expected and i also couldn't also put out the the information that we had just gotten into a scuffle and then i actually saw connor that night later on and he's like what are you what are you talking about we didn't like we don't like each other as much as we thought and i'm like well i don't actually make it a habit of pushing people that i'm that i actually kind of like so you know it's it's the heat of the moment that was right after the the lee hammond loss um which i still think lee hammond should be signed to this organization tomorrow i think he's a phenomenal talent um so it was it was a tough night for him a lot of emotions going on and uh it's tough losing, man. We kept stacking them up. Team Chandler just kept stacking them up. Two last ones from me. You and Connor have been going back and forth on Twitter now. You know, there was a while where it was sort of, well, maybe, maybe not. But now it seems his sights are firmly on you. How do you feel about that? No, it feels good. I mean, obviously, that's what I've always signed up for. I signed up for the Ultimate Fighter for the the fight at the end of the tunnel. The fight at the end of the tunnel was Chandler, Team Chandler versus Team McGregor on the Ultimate Fighter. And then 
Connor versus Chandler. And uh, that's the fight that I've known is going to happen the entire time. I've never wavered. And even when Connor is wavering, is he really wavering or is he just trying to realize that every single one of you guys is watching it, every single one of his movements, every single one of his his thumb strokes on Twitter. Um, so he, he's a master at it. He's good at it. And uh, I'm a man who stands firm in my in my convictions and my beliefs. And I think, you know, when we step inside the octagon, it's going to be the biggest fight we've seen in a very long time. And I do think the entire world is looking forward to the greatest comeback in combat sports history. Can he do it? Is he still that guy? We don't know until he actually goes in there and fights me. So um, either way, I'm excited about it. Um, I'm excited to compete, compete against him. Yeah. And I guess the word you've heard every day for the year, last year now is when. Mm -hmm. When? You tell me. Uh, so, no, I mean, obviously we saw, we heard Connor last weekend talking about, you know, toward the end of the year, obviously, um, you know, I'm ready for that tomorrow. I'm ready for the, uh, the end of the year, whenever it is. Um, but ultimately whenever it happens, it's going to happen at the exact right time. And I want, I want, just like I said, in my post fight speech, I want the biggest, baddest, best Connor we've seen in a very long time. Uh, 170, 155, 185, whatever weight class we want to do it. And that isn't a, I'll fight them on any terms. That's a, I'll fight them whenever, wherever, however. Michael, right here. Uh, we talk about the main event tonight. A lot of people think it's striker versus grappler. A lot of people mention you versus Connor. Well, obviously you got some heavy hands, but you also have a big advantage in the wrestling. I mean, is that something you look at and just say, Hey, if I just wrestle him, I can kind of get an easy win. Absolutely. Uh, the question is when I step in there, do I think absolutely, uh, you know, I think that cage door closes. He feels my pressure. There's no doubt that obviously the fight starts on the feet. I want to test it out. I do think I separate him from consciousness in the first round, if not the second round. Um, so well, I, I'm not afraid to go play that game with him. And I also know if I pick him up, put him down, it's going to be a long night for him. So either way, I believe I have the skills to not just beat him, but beat him in a dominant fashion and, and continue to stake my claim as one of the best in the world at 155 and hopefully wearing that gold in the next year or so. Um, so we'll see how we'll see how the fight plays out. That's the beautiful thing. That's why we love mixed martial arts. Even a guy like me, who I know I can go out there and wrestle him the entire fifteen minutes, twenty five minutes. Do I decide to? We'll see. And my last question: uh, You just mentioned about gold. Obviously, Islam Makhachev is is the champion of that division. Sound like he was going to fight Charles Oliveira. It seems like that might not be happening now. Justin Gaethje just had a big win. Obviously, you're very familiar with him. How do you feel like he matches up? I was, uh, yeah. I mean, I was not uh, any aware of any kind of Islam uh Oliveira falling out I thought they were both fighting um but you know I think if that fight doesn't happen I I'd said on my show um last week I believe Justin Gaethje wears gold in the next six to eight months I believe whatever fight happens next in October when if it, Islam fights October if he fights Oliveira I think Gaethje fights one of those guys and Gaethje wears gold um that's my opinion I'm a fan of Justin Gaethje fan of his style fan of just who he is as a person um but I think Islam versus Charles, I'm not going to doubt Islam ever again. I, I've put my foot in my mouth too many times. I think Islam has the ability to beat Charles, but I think Charles is a force to be reckoned with. So we'll see. Mike in front right here. Um, I'm sure you saw when Connor was doing the – he did that interview ringside during the Anthony Joshua fight, and they said, who are you going to fight next? And he said your name, but he kind of said it like, I have to do this. He didn't really want to do it. Do you, Are you getting the sense that like he's kind of begrudgingly fighting you at this point, like he's being forced into it? No, it's a good question because, yeah, that is the way he answered the question. But, I mean, Connor can create whatever narrative he wants. Like I said, we we – as a society in mixed martial arts, we listen to the, what he says, how he says it, his voice inflection, the flippant nature in which he says it, or the emphatic nature in which he says it. So we can read, read between the lines, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, maybe he, uh, realized, well, I decided to do this reality show against this guy that I hope I don't want to fight. Or I hope I don't have to fight. And then it turns out, okay, well now I kind of agreed that I was going to fight this guy. And now I kind of look like a sissy if I back out from fighting said guy. And I, and I said it from the very beginning. I gave Connor kudos at the very beginning of the show. You saw when he walked in the UFC apex and they made us stand there for 25 minutes, uh, awkwardly walking around each other and circling each other, like trying to get some, some, some audio clips. I said, I, I respect you for coming back and, and, agreeing to fight me because I'm not an easy fight. You know, I'm not an easy fight. The entire world knows I'm not an easy fight for anybody, let alone you. So I respect him for coming back and, and fighting me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think he might have a little bit of second thoughts here and there. There's some easier fights for him to take, but we'll see what happens. Are you checking the USADA pool at all? <laughs> I don't know how to check the USADA pool. Uh, but I know 
there are people who check the USADA pool and it's daily. Um, you know, that whole situation is very interesting to me. You know, I got a lot of different thoughts on it. Um, you know, ultimately, like I said, I signed with the, I signed with the organization in September of 2020 and I could have fought October of 2020. So, you know, this whole, like, you know, he retired, so it's got to take six months to come back. I mean, are we splitting hairs here? What are we talking about? What, what's to me, as long as a man is in the USADA testing pool for months on end and he's has the ability to be tested every single day or multiple times a day for a certain period of time, you know, it's, it's a sport, you know, it's uh it's a, that, that to me is a, is a very interesting gray area. And ultimately I'm out here and I can, I can fight Connor with one day on the USADA testing pool or a year in the USADA testing, USADA testing pool. It's not going to make a difference. And last one for me, have you given the UFC any at all? Like, like let's get this moving at some, at some point like i have to move on like as you're a prize fighter and i'm sure you want to compete if connor takes like say another eight months are you just like let's move on let me fight someone else no luckily for me i've i've made a, a habit out of getting prizes every single day you know i've done a very good job of setting myself up with a very large amount of financial literacy some great investments and a lot of relationship capital I'm not a guy who needs to fight tomorrow because I need to go pay my bills or buy a Maserati to, to flex. I'm a guy who has, has built wealth over the last decade and a half through smart financial decisions and having great people around me. So I'm in a good position. Um, so it's a constant talking between my management, the UFC, UFC talking to Connor and his team, I'm sure. So, you know, we're, uh, we're figuring this thing out. We're treading lightly. We're trying to figure it out. And, you know, the information comes in slower than I want it to more slower than you guys want it to, but it's, uh, the way it's happening and it's going to be Chandler versus McGregor and it's going to be fun. Have they given you locations at all? Cause I know you want to fight in Las Vegas at some point. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is one thing I have not fought in Las Vegas. I think it's pretty crazy to be signed with the organization now for almost two and a half years and not fight in Las Vegas. Um, historically Connor fights in Las Vegas, obviously, uh, most of the time. So I'm looking forward to that. And I do want to feel a, a Las Vegas fight week. I do want to feel a Las Vegas Connor McGregor opposite me fight week. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me. I'll fight him in a shoebox in Alaska. In Alaska, I don't care, but, um, ultimately, you know, Las Vegas would be uh, number one on my list and maybe not T-Mobile, maybe Allegiant stadium. We'll see. Michael, back here. Follow up. Um, so, just to follow up on your comments, you don't care whether he's in the USADA pool or not, like Connor. Well, I mean, obviously, being in the USADA testing pool is a prerequisite to competing yeah. in the in the UFC. Um, what I'm saying is, are we splitting hairs with the whole he's got to be in for six months thing? But ask how how long was Bo Nichols? Uh, opponent in the USADA testing pool. He signed on six days notice, right? This is what we do all the time. It's just, it's an interesting thing because of the, because of the character, the platform that Connor holds, who he is, we want to just dissect and make a huge deal out of this certain time frame type of thing. You know, that that's all I'm saying. I mean, ultimately there's guys being signed all the time and they're competing. Um, but he, being in the USADA testing pool is a prerequisite to competing with us, and uh, he will be before a fight is announced. So look for that, and then look for a fight announcement right away. I know you're not in a hurry to fight, as, as you mentioned. but no, I mean, I have to fight him tomorrow. I'm ready to fight tomorrow, but I'm also not yeah. hurting. Right. But do you have a deadline? Like if, if things prolong to a certain date, like is, is it time to turn the page or at least forget about it for, for the meantime? It's a good question. Um and it's a fair question. It's a tough question to answer because I think every single day, everything changes with time and circumstance, you know? Um, where we are, where we'll be tonight after the fights, where we'll be next week after the next fights, where, where we'll be after the title fight in October, things change all the time. Um, so I haven't really thought about a deadline. You know, I've got a loose deadline in my head that I'm not gonna share you, share with you tonight. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll flirt with that whenever we figure it out. And, and just uh, regarding the Ultimate Fighter, for a big part of your career, you were sort of outside looking in the UFC. Um, you've headlined big events, pay-per-views, you fought for the belt, and all the Ultimate Fighters. So just curious, um, outside of Las Vegas, fighting in Las Vegas, as you mentioned, is there any other bucket list that you want to hit um, items in this promotion? You know, it's, uh, it's a good question. I, I do think I have crammed a, a decade of UFC uh, fight experience in the last two and a half year, years, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, got a lot left to accomplish. I, I do think, obviously, fighting Connor on the biggest stage possible, finishing him in emphatic fashion. If I have to go through another guy to get to a, another title shot, 
um, winning the UFC gold, wearing UFC gold. That's always been the goal, becoming the number one guy in the world who, who I've always thought I have been on any given night. I think I can beat any lightweight in the entire world. Um, so obviously UFC gold fighting Connor. Those are the, those are the two big things that I always think about, always think about the UFC gold. And I am obviously right now focused on the task at hand, which is fighting Connor. Michael, here to your, you're right. Um, would you have liked for Connor to show up tonight? Like it's, it looks like he's probably not going to be here. And even if Brad hadn't switched teams, he should probably finish out the season, right? Uh, you know, Connor does what Connor wants to do. Um, I am, I, I think I'm a different breed, not just a, uh, not just a separate from Connor. I think I'm a different breed from every single person on this roster and a lot of people in the entire world. Whenever I show up, uh, or whenever I sign my name on a dotted line, I show up and I do it to the best of my abilities. And that's why I was with Kurt and Austin and Cody earlier today, getting, seeing them, giving them a hug, telling them how much I love them, tell them, telling them that I'm excited to watch them go compete tonight because tonight was part of the job. Um, that doesn't mean that he's doing anything wrong by not showing up. Uh, obviously I would love for him to be here for numerous reasons. Um, not the least of which would be to go say hi to him, see what's up see how life is, see how training's going. Um, but ultimately, you know, Connor does what Connor wants to do. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm here. And if he shows up, he does. Hey, my dance, you're right. I don't even know if this is on. I don't know but, uh, When was the last time, like, your, you or your team have spoken to the UFC about this? And have, did they give any indication of, like, because Connor's saying, like, December, end of the year. Have they told you that? Or is that just what he is saying? Um, I talked to Hunter Campbell less than 48 hours ago. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a constant moving target. I do think, uh, December isn't out of the question, you know, by the end of the year isn't out of the question. Um, but I don't know how likely it is. Um, talked to Sean Shelby last night, you know, so it's, uh, you know, one of those things where, man, I just have a different outlook on this sport and on the business of the sport and on, and I don't, I don't make it about me every day. I don't wake up and say, hey, how can this world serve me? I'm here to serve the world. And answers and answers will come to me when they come to me. And uh, we'll figure stuff out. And that doesn't mean I'm a, I'm a pushover, but that does mean I, I'm, practice, I'm in a season of practicing patience. So um, constant contact with the UFC, my management, and uh, they're talking to Connor's team as well. So, Let's say December doesn't come to fruition for whatever reason the next most logical date would probably be ufc 300 is that something that would that might appeal to you fighting on that card in the main event oh yeah i mean i think uh i think i would run through connor in december if we fought in december and then still fight on ufc 300 i, I would love to be on that card i think that card makes a lot of sense to to have a guy who uh was outside of the organization and I always said it from the very beginning when everybody was saying, hey, who the heck is this guy? I said from outsider to insider to contender to champion. Obviously, I fell short in the championship, uh, but I definitely went from outsider to insider to contender. And here I am. So for a guy who came outside of the org came from outside of the organization, it was outside of the organization for 12 years. And now to, to storm the UFC, kick down the door to the party. I think it makes a ton of sense for me to be on UFC 300. Um, whether it's me and Connor or if it's after me and Connor or um, me and whoever, um, I would like to be on UFC 300, so we'll see. There's been a lot of misinformation online about, you know, the USADA stuff and whether or not Connor needs to be in the pool for six months or not. Has the UFC told you that? Has they've said, they said to you, like, yes, he does need to be in the pool for six months, or have they not mentioned that to you? I've never point blank asked them, hey, does it got to be six months, whatever, or, or any time we have been, it's always a blanket statement of, hey, that's, that's the policy, right? To me, it's probably a 100-page USADA document where there's all kinds of fine print and all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, just like everything in life. Uh, jurisdictions and, and governing bodies love to make things complicated. Uh, to me, I'm a prize fighter. I'm a father and I'm a husband. Um, those are the very simple things for me in life. I show up when I need to show up. And I do what I need to do. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, obviously the UFC said, hey, that's a prerequisite. This is what we do. We are governed by USADA. Everyone in the UFC has to be in USADA. Um, Ultimately, though, no, I have not gotten, you know, because I'm also not that guy. I'm not going to be calling these guys every single day. Hey, what is the policy? Is this true? Is it not true? Because these guys got way bigger things to figure out every single day is the amount of fires that these guys are putting out every single day. They don't need me calling and say, hey, I read this on uh, MMAJunkie.com. You know, is this true? You know, thanks, man. What? Michael, just trash, trash Michael, just, website. One, <laughs> it's got to be fake news. Michael, just one follow up over here. Just yeah. on, on my question earlier, like when you got the dates, like let's say 
Connor's guys had opened in the final. He he the results gone the opposite way. Would you have ever even considered not showing up tonight? You're saying if, if what I'm saying is he's not here. Would you like was that even a possibility for you that like let's say all your guys lost, you would have not shown up, or would you have always been at the final of this show to, to finish it out? Eh, well, so I, I don't. I I gotta clarify. I don't think me showing up at the end of this and I had no guys fighting here. I probably wouldn't have shown up either. I probably would have tucked my tail between my legs and not come, you know, uh, because then once again, this is why it was never about me. It was team Chandler versus team McGregor, but it was never about Michael Chandler. My name was on the Jersey, but it was never about me. It was always about these guys. So because I have guys here, I'm here. If I didn't have guys here, that would have been me showing up, telling the whole world, asking for attention and saying, Hey, remember that reality show I did on ESPN for 12 weeks. Right? So that's why I'm here. I'm here because I have three guys here. I do think Cody Gibson beats Brad Katona. I do think both of my guys in the finals at 155 get a contract. One of them will get a guaranteed contract, and the other will get a contract because of a great showing tonight and because of hopefully what I instilled in them over the the, the five weeks that we spent in Vegas. Uh, MVP is a free agent at the moment. Can you see him signing with the UFC? I think it's a great idea for any uh, free agent to – at least look at the UFC. Um, obviously, I couldn't tell you where I would be right now had I not tested free agency, had I not sat in Hunter Campbell's office and taken that phone call from Dana White. Um, it has changed my life in insurmountable ways. Um, so for a guy like MVP, you know, uh, it's tough. It depends on it depends on what his goals are. It depends on where he's at. It depends on how his relationship is with, with Bellator. Um, but... It, you're a fool if you don't at least test the market these days because there's there's a lot of options outside of where he's at right now. So it worked out for me, and I can't imagine my life different. And just last one, um, just want your thoughts on Israel Adesanya taking on Sean Strickland. Man, I love Izzy. Izzy is, uh, in my opinion, one of the greatest mixed martial artists on the planet. Um, his skill, his ability to put together a fight, put together a game plan, beat people. Uh, but then on the other side of it, I actually got asked uh, – I did the DC RC show the other day and I was with DC and it was kind of tap in. Do you agree with or disagree with does DDP, uh, Duplessis, does he have a better chance of beating Izzy than Strickland does? And I do think DDP is a, is a better fighter stylistically or technique wise, but I think Sean Strickland has that X factor. I think, I think Izzy only gets caught in some kind of crazy thing where we all completely lose our mind because a guy like a guy like Sean Strickland, who probably doesn't have the skill set to be able to beat Izzy, just comes in, slings heavy heavy leather with reckless abandon, and absolutely somehow shocks the entire world. So um, I'm excited about that fight. I think Sean Strickland is a he and I are a little bit different in a lot of a lot in a lot of ways. <laughs> I don't think Sean Strickland and I are gonna be best buds, um, but uh, you know. I think he's I think he's a good fighter and I think that's a very very intriguing matchup.